I'm Bernie O'Rourke, Extension Youth Livestock Specialist with the University of Wisconsin Extension and the University of Wisconsin Animal Sciences Department. Part of the educational process for youth enrolled in meat animal projects is to gain knowledge about their project as a food animal. This is a critical piece of the learning process and gives youth the skills to improve their project for future years by the information gained. Capturing this information assigns a value to the animal based on industry standards. One of the ways we gain information on animals as a food product is by collecting carcass information. This is done by taking measurements on the carcass of the animal by a judge. The majority of the county fairs in Wisconsin utilize the collection of actual measurements. Although utilizing ultrasound to collect carcass data is done by some county fairs. Ultrasound is a technology that can capture carcass measurements such as back fat and loin muscle area without harvesting the animal. Although there are many pros and cons to using either carcass data or ultrasound, the important thing is being able to capture data and, be, and then being able to interpret what it means. In ultrasound, a technician will capture an image from the live animal in the same location where carcass information is collected. It produces an image from the ultrasound machine shown here. The technician will then use this image to estimate the back fat, loin muscle area, and in beef, a quality grade. Here is Ron Russell, Senior Lecturer with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Animal Sciences Depart Department to explain the carcass data and what it means. This is going to be an evaluation of pork carcasses and what we try to evaluate on pork carcasses in consideration that we get value from the whole carcass, uh, let me do just a brief review of the parts of the carcass. We've got, of course, this area uh, up in here is, of course, the ham or uh, on fresh pork, we might call it the fresh pork leg, but this is the ham. Then we've got the loin. The loin extends all the way from here, just in front of the ham, all the way down to the shoulder. It comprises this region right through here. And then, of course, we've got the shoulder. The shoulder is a two-part shoulder, one that we call the arm shoulder, the other called the, uh, the, the blade shoulder. And we do also have the belly. The belly is that, the, the, the region of the carcass that we use to manufacture bacon. And so all five of those major parts of the carcass contribute to value. Among the more critical value components of that are the loin, and then kind of the second most valuable parts from the carcass tend to be either from the ham or from the belly, and that tends to be somewhat dependent on what current market conditions are, whether or not the, the season favors more distribution of ham or a season favors the distribution of bacon. So, but at any rate, when we get to a carcass evaluation program, we try to look at and assess how much lean, how much lean muscle we can derive from these carcasses. And a major focal point for us is this area is where we make a cross section, or we make a cut between the 10th and 11th rib on a pork carcass. And what that gives us access to is a very, very good fat measurement that suggests how fat the entire carcass is. It also gives us an opportunity to measure the muscling in the carcass. And so what we do in the assessment of pork carcass value is that we will measure what we call the 10th rib fat depth. And that 10th rib fat depth is taken by going three-fourths of the way around the loin muscle and measuring the fat depth at that location all the way from the muscle, all the way down through the muscle, to the outer surface of the skin. And uh, because a typical pork carcass is harvested in a way that the skin is left on. And so, for example, in this uh, representation, this carcass would measure uh, 0.85 inches of fat, or 85 hundredths of an inch of fat, from all the way down to the muscle to the outside of the skin. So that's used for our assessment of fat on the carcass. To get a measurement of muscling, we'll use a pork grid, and this grid is made in such a way that each uh, dot on this grid represents a half of one-tenth of a square inch of muscle. And so we can lay the grid right on the muscle itself, and we can count how many dots it takes to 
make up the area of the loin muscle itself. And so in this example, we'll take this and this. I've got a pre-drawn area on this grid that is six square inches. And so I would count the number of dots in that pre-drawn area that do not uh, touch part of the loin muscle itself. And then I'd count the dots on the outside of the pre-drawn area that, do, that are in part of the muscle and, and kind of do a summation of the ones that count and the ones that don't count to get our final loin, loin muscle area. So for example on this one, in my pre-drawn area of 6 inches that are not touching part of the loin muscle, I have 1, I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 dots that don't count, so to speak. Now I'm going to measure or count the number that are on the outside of that area. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I've got 19 dots that do count as part of the loin area. Well, the difference between my 19 and my 17 is two dots, and I had two dots more that contribute to loin area then that we're not counting in there. So essentially I've got two more dots than my original six inch area. So my area, because each dot is one half of a tenth of a square inch, I've got a tenth more than my six inch area. So I've got a 6.1 square inch loin muscle. All right, so then what we wind up doing in carcass evaluation is it will apply this fat measurement and the loin area into a formula along with carcass weight and we'll get a prediction of percentage of lean in the entire carcass. And in many cases percentage of lean is a very very uh, strong factor in our final carcass ranking. Now one thing to keep in mind on this is that we've come into a time that uh, swine producers did an extremely good job of selecting for genetics in the hog population that would be extremely muscular and lean and we found ourselves now having some limiting factors. We need for pigs to have at least a half inch of fat at this three-quarter lateral measurement. If they have less fat at that area then those pigs sometimes or those carcasses are sometimes too lean for desirable pork production. Sometimes they'll have poor quality issues, sometimes they'll have uh, belly thickness that is insufficient to manufacture bacon. And so we just, uh, the industry has gotten to the point that it's pretty much dictated and said, you know, we need those pork carcasses to have at least a half inch of fat at the tenth rib measurement. Another area that we've come into challenge with is pigs that are actually too muscular. Now in a pork carcass show, light muscle pigs kind of move themselves to the bottom of a ranking because they don't perform well in percent lean. But we've had some pigs that have been selected genetically for so much muscling that they've reached a point of being less desirable from an overall consumer desirability if their loin muscle is actually too big. And so if we measure this loin area and it's over nine inches, we tend to start to discount those carcasses a little bit. And if they get all the way up to 10 inches or bigger, we'll sometimes move those carcasses down in their ranking in a set of pork carcasses because they've moved out of the realm of overall consumer desirability. On the other side here, we've got another carcass that is just as a contrast to the one that I just demonstrated the measurement. We've got a carcass here that, as you can see, has more fat. So we've got a bigger fat depth measurement. Its loin area is going to measure smaller than the one that we measured already. And so this carcass is a good example of one that would have a less desirable pork carcass composition. One other thing that's kind of critical for you to take notice of, if you can see it, is that our pork quality is appreciably better in the, in the one that's on your left in the picture, or the one that's in, that I've got my hand below. I've got more desirable lean color. I've also got a nicer amount and fineness and distribution of marbling. The carcass on your right, uh, the lean color is a little bit pale. It's not unacceptable, it's just less desirable. It also doesn't have the desirable quantity and distribution of marbling. And we tend to want some marbling, we like for it to be well distributed. And this other carcass is certainly acceptable, it's just not as desirable as the, as the one on your left. 
And so this carcass would certainly be more desirable in an overall carcass competition, whereas the other one would be less desirable from an overall composition standpoint, as well as having less desirable quality.